I've somehow managed to stay away from discussing Brexit on my channel, despite it being a much more important issue than what I normally cover. In all honesty, a lot of it is just to do with how toxic I find the debate to be. And before I go into the subject of this video, I want to get my own feelings on Brexit off my chest so you have a bit of context as to where I'm coming from. Now, I voted to remain in the referendum. I was never one of those people who championed the EU as this arbiter of human rights and moral superiority in the way the Remain camp now paints it. I always had my criticisms, but I felt at the time it was better the devil you know than to follow through with leaving as I had no idea what that would look like, and being honest, I still don't. I found the campaigns on both ends to be terrible, leave were full of promises and no substance, but remain banked on, support us or you're a racist idiot, which, let's be honest, wasn't exactly the best tactic considering how that turned out. Now, I'll admit I felt disappointed when the results came in, but being honest, it was more the feeling of backing the wrong horse than anything else. I spent all my time in a run-up reading the likes of The Guardian and not paying attention to exactly why anyone really wanted to leave at this moment. But then, afterwards, I started listening to friends who voted to leave, I read articles and watched videos online, and whilst I would not brand myself a Brexiteer by any means, I did come to accept that leave won. I understood their arguments and I do think we should follow through with the results of the referendum and not just pass them off as being wrong. Now, I am not expecting all Remainers to be like me and to come and accept Brexit. Far from it. If you're passionate about remaining in the EU, feel free to speak out all you want. I've no issue with people who want to remain at all. But rather than reflect on what happened, Remain seemed to opt to double down on branding their opponents as racist. I personally remember the day after the referendum when I was at work and a colleague sent out an email to the whole department telling people if they voted leave that they weren't welcome to come out on a night out. At the time, I took that as being nothing more than a sore loser, but years have passed and the rhetoric seems to stay the same. And we've all heard it. Brexiters are idiots. Brexiters are racists. They are idiot racists. They're far right. They're fascists. They're Nazis. They didn't know what they were voting for. They're not as intelligent as Remainers. All of this on repeat over the last two years, and it's not going anywhere at all. And when I say this, I'm not referring to random comments that I've seen on Facebook and Twitter, although they, that certainly shows up as well. But these are actual conversations I've had with people that I'm close with, some of my best friends, people who I think incredibly highly of. And yet, when you mention Brexit, the same record starts all over again. Brexit is a wrong. Who cares about democracy? Sovereignty is just a joke. Our country's racist and I'm really ashamed of being British. Now, I'm not saying the attitude from Brexiters can be any better. I, I really hate the idea of calling Remainers traitors as though we live in the 15th century and everyone must have the same damn opinion on Brexit. But I've not heard Brexiters claim to have the moral high ground. A common Remainer response to don't smear all Brexiters as racist, and I've honestly lost count of how many times I've been told this in person, seems to be not all Leave voters are racist, but all racists voted to leave. And yet, I hear Remainers constantly talk of a divided Britain and refuse to take any responsibility for the situation themselves. Granted, neither do the hardest of Brexiteers, but again, moral high ground. I frankly expect more from the self-proclaimed, more intelligent, non-racist, morally correct camp than I do from the one who openly doesn't give a shit. And Brexit as being considered racist has stuck. Just look at Aunt Anna Sobri, for example. It's fine for her to call Brexiteers fascists and overwhelmingly racists who support the Tommy Robinson man, but when she's labelled a Nazi, essentially the same thing. The police are called and it's contempt across the critical spectrum. Well, it's fine for Brexiters to be smeared, apparently, and I've honestly talked to more Remainers who feel this is acceptable than those who don't. Again, never hear any condemnation of this from their camp, and I wonder if there's a similar smear that could be used against them too. I mean, we've got to be consistent here. Maybe it's because I'm in a so-called privileged position where I voted one way, then came to accept the other side's position that I feel I can do this. But the past week really has brought out one shocking rhetoric out of the ground against Remainers, and that's to do with age. Now, one of the first complaints I heard from Remainers since the vote was that the old people stole the result from the young. 
who Remainers are convinced are universally on their side. And that old people's votes shouldn't count the same as the young, just because the elderly are not potentially able to be around as long. So they're not going to see the full results of what happened. Now, like earlier, I always talk this as more spoil sport than any kind of real serious argument. After all, I doubt any Remainers would honestly insist their own Remainer granny shouldn't vote because she's too old. But The last week has seen this line of thought come to prominence again. This shouldn't come as a surprise considering only Leave are ever held to account for their rhetoric and it's hard to imagine one Remainer calling out another, seriously. But some have felt emboldened enough to take to the national stage and spout it. Writing for The Guardian, Harden Remainer Polly Toynbee proclaimed that Saturday the 19th of January 2019 would be the moment the UK turns from Leave to Remain. Now the reason for this is a YouGov report which claims the Leave votes lead has been declining by 1,350 a day. This is because of the elderly dying. So on the 19th, enough old people will have died since the referendum, Toynbee says, that there will no longer be a majority for leaving the EU. So it will therefore be the will of the people to remain, and this should be cemented in a second referendum. Of course, Toynbee warns that Leave may win a second time, and also says that Remainers are right to fear how much further they may go in a second referendum, always wrong-footing a painfully fact-based gentle Remain campaign. I remember the core remain argument last time to be Brexit is for idiot racists. Polly, at least, that's what the remain has constantly told me, even close friends. Now, Toyon B concludes Leave is afraid of a so-called people's vote in case they lose, ignoring the very real implication that their vote didn't matter in the first place and what that would entail going forward. Now, strangely, the only comment on people changing opinion is that she believes it's predominantly pro-Remain. I beg to differ. There are many Remain voters like myself that accept the result and will probably vote to leave in a potential second referendum to send the message to the elites of this country that they should not dictate our beliefs. And let's face it, coming out as Brexitist feels as toxic as saying Trump's not such a bad guy after all. Branding everyone as something negative does not change their views. It just pushes them underground. Toynbee's comments came alongside a website which was launched earlier in the week called deferendum.co.uk, which was set up to count down the number of elderly people dying until our moral arbiters can proclaim their will is now what the majority want. The site caused controversy, though the implications of the Remainers wanting the elderly to die was ignored by the likes of The Guardian, with the site's owner eventually shutting it all down, calling himself a victim of vicious attacks by Brexiters. So I guess it's fine to champion the deaths of Leave voters, but not criticise the man doing it. Cool. Thanks for maintaining the moral high ground there. The site itself now just links to a video on The Independent. But this isn't where the whole story ends. We have the 90s pop singer Jamelia calling for over 75s to have their votes removed on The Jeremy Vine Show. And we also have several kind of worrying comments coming from hardline Remainers yet again. Where's the condemnation from that side? I always see this being called when you get mad leavers commenting in the likes of The Express. So why is there no consistency? I condemn this rhetoric on both sides and I expect that from other people as well. Now, this whole idea of denying the elderly the vote because they might not be around certainly reeks of ageism. I don't like using terms like this, but I feel in this instance I have no choice. And I wonder whether they'd want to deny the vote to the terminally ill. After all, they won't be around to see the implications of their vote. And I just need to point out one of my best friends passed away last year was a Leave voter. So should her vote be revoked because she's no longer around? She certainly intended to be around to see Brexit happen. And I think that it's important that that's recognised. And if we're to follow the same train of logic, that the elderly won't be impacted by their voting choices, shouldn't this be applied to other political choices as well? What about the issue of high tax? Should that only be voted on by those earning a certain threshold, let's say about 30, 40, 50,000 pounds a year? I mean, after all, lower earners aren't going to be paying that same level of tax. So why should they get a say in a matter that is ultimately not going to impact them in the same way? And why is there this assumption that all the elderly wanted to leave? There is definitely elderly voters who wanted to remain as well. And this goes for the young. A lot of people seem to assume they all wanted to remain. But as a Channel 4 show recently showed, it's not quite as popular as a lot of remainers would like you to believe. 
So as, I, as I've explained, we've seen that there's quite a few Remainers out there who have a generally negative view of the elderly. You could almost say that they are ageist. But that won't be fair at all, because after all, not all Remainers are ageist. So let me co-opt a popular Brexit expression. Not all Remainers are ageist, but all ageists voted to remain. That's not very nice of me, is it? It's not nice that I can smear a whole group like that. And you're completely right. I don't think all Remainers are ageist at all. I don't think it's fair for either side in this debate to be slandered because of the actions of an extremist minority. It's something I, as an individualist, like to be consistent about. Every one of us is accountable for our own actions. And being a certain person is no indicator for your own thoughts and beliefs. But I bring this up because as someone who voted to remain, I'm tired of the debate being one-sided. It's fine to slander Brexiters but not Remainers. How about we judge each person on their own actions? Why don't we listen to people on both sides, like I have, and understand where they're coming from and try a thing called empathy? Don't assume Brexiters are racist idiots. Don't assume Remainers are ageist traitors. The debate is so toxic because both sides are acting as such and not holding themselves to account. Now, at least we can all agree on one thing, whether you're Remain or Leave. Theresa May is toxic and we had a great moment in the last week where we all banded together to shoot down a frankly abhorrent deal for the UK. So why don't we all get together and work on Brexit and make the UK great again?